Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Valhalla by Lucas Wozniak and is for two to six players with I believe a single player variant, 13 and up, and it takes about 30 to 60 minutes to play the game. In the game Valhalla, you're simply going to get your own player board as well as you'll be drafting units onto that board. You'll be utilizing those units with your die by selecting a set of die here and your color, rolling those die like you would in a Yahtzee style fashion, and placing them on the units to then attack your opponent. Your opponent will then have the opportunity to try and defend and if your attack goes through them then they'll take damages and whatnot. Your objective of course is to become the winner at the end of the game by doing the most damage but of course there's different variants to the game and different ways you're to play. For instance there's going to be like this low-key expansion that gives players bonuses for losing the game which changes it a bit as well as of course a single player variant and a bunch of exclusive content that I won't be showing you too much of. Uh, it's also going to be a king of the hill variant you could play. There's just a ton of stuff in this game but anyway that's the basic idea of it. Let's come down below Hello, and I'll tell you about talk about most of the products and all the little expansions and whatnot in the game. So here we have the game Valhalla and everything included as well as a bunch of stuff that may or may not be included. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go through all of it as best I possibly can. There's a lot to take in, so here we'll go. The first is the starting player set of cards here. This is what you're gonna get in the base game. It comes with all of these cards and you'll be utilizing them to draft onto your player board. Speaking of player boards, these are your player boards and they fold out. You can have four spaces for your characters. These are your battling areas and so on and so forth. You'll have your girl on this side. And this is where you're gonna have your glory, which is the most important thing in the game because you want to have glory. Uh, these are going to be an expanded uh, aspect of the game, which is going to be uh, Valkyries. This over here is going to be a Thor expansion. Uh, this here, I believe, is the Dwarves. This is a Kickstarter exclusive. This is Loki, which you'll be using if you want to make it so that when you lose battles, you can potentially gain bonuses. You're going to be getting these team cards, which you can give to players if you're playing a team variant of the game, to signify players across from you are on your team. Some extra random cards, I don't know what they're for. This is for the solo variant of the game and this is more kickstarter exclusive which is called odin's blessing it's an area in which you can go ahead and buy cards on this board here which is kind of interesting and then you're going to have your shields over here this is for when you're doing battling these are your player dice there's obviously six different dice sets for these six different players that can be in the game and then you can have bonus die which you can go ahead and utilize as well if you have the cards that say you could use bonus die over here are player reference cards which tell you what your cards do and how you can utilize them these are jarl cards they don't have artwork on them because it's a prototype but you can use these on your player board and it'll give you special abilities and then over here is your king and your king of the hill cards and king of the Mount kings of the mountain card uh, you'll begin utilizing this uh, to basically increase the game's playability by changing the way it works and forcing you to fight players as they maneuver across this board you're gaining bonus points and in addition making it easier to fight them because you'll get bonus die when you attack them and then of course you'll be using these king cards to determine who is king on the bottom of the board here is you're going to see this little uh, play mat here which represents uh, your standard playboard. You have your cards in your, wall, your your discard area and then of course your battling area. And that's pretty much what you're going to be in the game. I actually got this little cool thing here which kind of talked about uh, Vikings and whatnot. But this is what you're getting along with of course the two rule books for the expansions and for the base game and the box itself. All right, so let's talk about how to set up Valhalla. First of all, everybody's gonna get a player board, everybody's gonna get their set of die, you're gonna get four of these shield tokens, and once all four are removed from somebody, that will trigger the end of the game with one more round. You're going to get to draft a warrior and put it onto your board. You're gonna get to draw seven cards from the deck, everybody will do that, and discard two, forming your hand of five. You get a player reference card, you're gonna get a Jarl, and uh, then you're going to begin the game. After you've got your stuff set up, you're gonna have a turn, and depending on what expansions and whatnot you got, you're gonna either be utilizing the main basic reference, or you'll be utilizing the throne reference card, which will include Odin's Blessing. In general, though, you'll be able to play warriors down, you'll be able to draw a card from your deck if you can't. You can go ahead and battle somebody. You can place down extra warriors, provided there's uh, three pips or less on both of the warriors, and then you're gonna be going back and forth. You're just trying to gain glory. Whenever you defeat an opponent, you can take the cards that you use to defeat them and place them into your glory section and vice versa with your opponent doing the same thing. At the end of the game, whoever has the most glory is going to be the winner of the game. So let's go down and show you a four player variant. We'll probably just go back and forth with two players, but just so you get a good idea of everything, I'll try to explain all the expansions as well so you get a good idea of how they work. And uh, then we'll go ahead and talk about what I think about it. Okay, so here we go. Talking about the walkthrough for the game Valhalla. There's a lot to cover, but I'm just gonna try and give you a brief synopsis for each piece, all right? First of all, your main deck and then of course 
course in a four player game, you're gonna take off the top 10 cards. It's different for each player. Everybody's got their player boards here, their dice they're gonna be utilizing, the shields are gonna be here. They're gonna all have their own Jarls. These are gonna be their main characters. I don't have this here, but I'm guessing it's gonna have some kind of activated ability or passive ability that will help the player. I went ahead and given every single one of these players a reference card. And then I've also given them seven cards to which they're gonna discard two. Um, now, before we start anything, of course, you know, decide what you wanna put in the deck and what variants you want to play. If you want to play the team variant, you're going to simply say, okay, I'm on this black team, I'm going to give this player a black card. I'm on the red team, so I'll give this player a red card. And then you'll know that the teams are with each other. That's just kind of how it works with the basic team mode of the game. This is the drafting portion, which when the game begins, you're simply going to put out X, which is the number of players plus one. And the player with the largest beard or the youngest player is going to get to go first and draft in a clockwise manner one of these guys onto their board. This is the Loki deck. You're going to simply shuffle it up and choose one of them to play with if you want. And based on the strength difference in battle, the loser can get to take an activated ability here if you want to play with it. It's just a nice extra, uh, next nice extra basic variation to the game. So if you have two, zero two power um, difference, send one of your activated warriors to Valhalla, which is a good thing. So uh, this helps you win the game when you're losing. But we're not going to play with any of these things. We're just going to talk about them all. This is the King of the Hill and Kings of the Mountains variant. These are the King cards. This is the King. And when you become the King, you're going to simply start here. You're going to gain glory points if you're the King. And as you gain, you're going to increase. And then you're going to gain more bonus glory points. And of course, whenever uh, you get to this point, uh, your opponents are going to want to battle you because they'll get a bonus attack die. If you get to this point, they'll get two bonus attack dies to fight you here, and it stops you from gaining the glory. On the opposite side of the card is going to be the Kings of the Mountain, and it works very similar to that, but you'll actually get two of the Kings, and you can utilize them to fight back and forth, and if you ever get de de defeated, you'll go put it back in the middle so somebody else can try and, try and get it. Anyway, that's the King variant. Uh, this is just extra reference card for that variant as well. You're going to have, these are the, uh, I think these are the Thor cards here, and you're going to simply add them to the deck if you want, and if you have a equal, uh, less than or greater than, or it tells you on the cards here um, of the number of warriors from your opponent, you can utilize these to gain a bonus of some sort. This says you get plus one die, uh, plus glory, plus a card, so on and so forth. So you can utilize these kind of like action cards, and of course you don't have to include those either. Then you've got the Fire Giants, which is basically an expansion. You're going to choose one of these things, the Dwarves, the Fire Giants, or the Valkyries, and you can put them into the deck. You don't want to have have more than one of them though so you just pick one of them this one here is going to have interesting aspects where it'll be like you have to discard a card if you want to put this guy into your tableau or your opponent will have to discard a warrior or you'll have to uh put a card back to your hand if you want to do that these guys are very powerful as you can see uh, so the, the, the powers up here the uh required die you need to get is down here and this is the amount of glory you get if you can send them to valhalla but they have a cost on them so you may or may not want to use that expansion this one here is the dwarves and it's just going to be basically new monsters new new different kinds of action cards and whatnot and you can go ahead and put that in as well and finally you're going to have the valkyries over here the valkyries are going to give you a set of bonus cards which you'd set aside because sometimes you're going to get bonus glory which you'll be able to put into valhalla depending on what the card says you get two additional glory points if you have won the battle without using dice uh, rerolls so if you don't roll die rerolls and you win you're going to get to take the two glory wherever it is there's one twos and three and you put it into valhalla so that's how you gain more victory points with this specific valkyrie deck and of course there is just a bunch of Valkyries and other cool stuff in here that you can utilize. All right, those are the main expansions to the game, um, except for the one over here, which is Odin's Blessing. And if you want to play with Odin's Blessing, on the back of your reference card, it's going to have a little throne. And it'll give you an extra action um, in the game, which is this little throne action here. Basically, you're going to take the deck of cards here, and you're going to shuffle it up, and then you're going to deal it out down here, this row. And you will be able to uh, buy these cards as one of your actions, one of your five actions in the in, in the first section. So in, on your turn, you'll take one of these and then you'll take this one here. But of course, when you have the expansion, you can choose this extra fifth action. And it says if you discard two cards, you can get this one. If you discard a card or discard a card here, you can take these ones as an action. And this one's a freebie. And uh, they're basically going to, if you buy one of these guys, these guys will go down and a new one will pop up. If you buy one of these guys here, it'll have a higher cost. These are obviously two, uh, discard a card for either one of these. This is discard two cards. But if you buy either one of these here, you're going to actually have to lose, they put this card in next to your uh, Jarl, and then you have to discard the, the bottom one here and then move these guys down and add two new ones. Each of these do different things, and they're basically like, uh, 
they basically activated abilities depending on if you're an attacker or defender, whatever it says. So for instance, this one here, if you bought this one and put it next to your Jarl, it says if you put a axe on this card, you'll get plus two to your combat value. And whenever you utilize, you can only do it once, you just tap it, to, turn it to the side, and that will ensue the ability. You can have up to three of them next to your Jarl and you can utilize them as such. They are pretty cool and something I would definitely recommend adding to the game because it adds an extra action, which is just cool, right? So now we're going to begin, before we look at the cards in our hand here, we're going to go ahead and draft, and the youngest player will go ahead and pick one of these guys and put it into their tableau. Their tableau is going to involve these four spaces, and you can decide whatever you want to put in with them. Some of them are going to have passive abilities, some of them are going to have just a lot of die you need to put on them, but they're going to give you a bunch of attack power. So he'll place one of these here, the next player will go ahead and choose one, maybe he'll pick this one here, and this one will go for something a little stronger, and finally this one's a little too scary to begin the game with, we'll put this one here, and then this one will go and then everybody's gonna get and draw their cards they have their dice and everything so they're ready to go and the last thing here is your extra die which you can use from cards in this deck here um we won't need these either because we're not using the valkyries so we'll go ahead and take our seven cards we're going to go ahead and look at them and i'm going to go ahead and explain some of the cards uh, so first of all this one here basically just is a card you can play during combat anytime it says you can add two to your strength value this one here is a specific uh, requirement that says if you use this card, you can ignore your opponent's Yaro ability. This is a basic warrior, and it has the cost in order to utilize its strength, and if it goes to Valhalla, that's how many points you get. And this card here is another action that says if you roll and you get a bunch of the Xs, which are basically blanks here, you can then utilize all of those blanks to make them wild and make them whatever you want them to be. So those are the different types of cards in the base set, okay? So just, as, just, just for a reference, I should say. So anyway, we'll go ahead and take all these, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we have to discard two cards. So he'll pick two he doesn't like, maybe the two stronger ones for right now. Uh, let's go ahead and pick these two here. And he's just gonna put them in the discard pile. Everybody's just gonna get down to five cards. I'm just gonna do it randomly here. And uh, here we go, two more of these cards. And let's see, I think, I think that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So two more cards. Okay, everybody's got their hands now. Now, okay, now, so I'm not gonna play the full on game. I'm just gonna go ahead and explain all, all the actions you can take. I'll go ahead and put this out here so you can see it. The first thing uh, that you can choose to do is take a card from your hand and play it onto your tableau. And it's going to be, you can look at them over here basically and say, okay, I wanna put this guy and I wanna place him on my tableau there. And uh, if you have, if you have the next action, which is simple as well, it's it's three uh, symbol placements. So this is two, right? This is one placement, and here's another two right here. Uh, there are bigger ones here, like this one. This one is a four. But if you want, you can put any dude down on your tableau, or you could put two of them down, provided it is three or less. So in this case, I could put down these two guys onto my tableau, and I think I'm going to do that as my action. So he will be uh, done with that. At the end of his turn, he's gonna go ahead and draw a card. And it will say on the card here, uh, the, 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 just draw a card, pick, uh, draw two and pick one. So you draw two and you go ahead and say, I want this one. And then you pick this one here. Okay, then the next player is gonna get to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next action. And oh, he's got his little card here. The next action over here is going to be to attack. And attacking is pretty simple. You wouldn't want to do it at the beginning of the game, but I'll just go ahead and explain how it works. You're going to be taking these die, Yahtzee form, you'll be rolling them, and you're going to be able to re-roll them, and your objective is going to be trying to place these onto your guys here. And uh, you're also going to have to choose an opponent, so you maybe want to fight him. And so once you fight him, you're going to add up all your glory. You can choose to play cards if you want, and they're going to then, or not glory, sorry, attack value. Then they're going to be able to do the same thing. They'll be able to roll to defend themselves. If you can go higher than them, you'll take all the cards that you want that were in the battle and you can put them face down into your glory area and that will score you Valhalla area which will score you glory which is the most important thing in the game your other action is of course like I said Odin's blessing you can go ahead and buy these cards and place them next to your Jarl and then this one here is if you can't play a unit because you, you you know you you don't have any warriors in your hand you can then draw two pick one and then at the end of your turn, you'll be able to draw two and pick one again because you want to be able to play warriors. So that's the only way you can actually do this if you don't have warriors in your hand. You have to reveal your hand as well. And those are the main actions in the game. Players are just going to be going back and forth utilizing these symbols here. There's a shield, you've got an arrow, you've got a sword, and I think you've got like a pike or like an, yeah, here we go, like that. 
And then of course, you're gonna have the blank side. And you're gonna be trying to roll them and place them on here. There's a lot of different aspects to the cards too, and it'll tell you certain things, like if you have a red and a purple guy in your tableau, you can gain three to your ability uh, to, for combat, and they all have different things here. And some of them are going to be stronger in attack value and lower in glory. Other ones will be really low in attack value, but really high in glory, which means if you're able to utilize them, you'll put them in. Now also remember, whenever you utilize them, they're gonna go down there into your area and you won't be able to utilize them again, but it's worth it because you get a bunch of glory. So that's the basic idea of how you play the game and the different aspects of the cards here. And of course there's a ton, and I mean a ton of different like variants you can play the game. There's two ways the game is gonna end. If the deck runs out or if somebody loses all their shields. Every time you lose a battle, you're going to lose a shield to your opponent. And once that happens, that will trigger the end of the round. So once you go through that, that somebody gets hit, loses all their shields. There'll be one more round throughout the game, which will tr basically trigger, trigger Ragnarok. And in which case, everybody's just gonna be rolling their die, trying to get all of their symbols to match. So for this player, maybe he'd be rolling here. He's like, okay, I need to get these guys here. So I've got a sword here. Do I have an ax? I do. I can score him. I need another ax, but I don't have one. So I'd have to uh, I put this here, I suppose. And I got a shield here, I suppose. And you lose one, you get to roll again. All right. And nope, that doesn't cut it. But because I rolled these two guys here, I can simply put them in uh, Valhalla, which will score me an extra five glory at the end of the game. Everyone will have to do that once. Basically, no attacking, just trying to save yourselves from the Ragnarok. And then add up your points, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game, Valhalla. All right, let's come up and talk about it. So two quick caveats before we begin my review. The first one is when you're rolling dice, I'll explain this a little better. You roll the die, then you place them in your area. You can utilize the ones you want. And the ones you don't want, you can go ahead and set aside, discard one, and then roll again. And then you're gonna be able to place them down until eventually you have no dice left. And everything that you've got on the field that has equipped uh, dice to it, provided that all the dice match all the symbols, you'll utilize that card. When you're attacking, you're simply going to, uh, you're gonna be trying to defeat them, right? But if you win, you have to put all the units that you use to Valhalla, right? Which will gain you glory, which is the most important part of the game. But you'll also lose those units. So you have to put new ones down in hopes to roll later. When you're a defender, however, and you do win, you can choose if you want to put the defending units you have and place them into Valhalla, or you can choose to keep them out. That's up to you. But of course, it, it does make you more defenseless. So it's gonna be kind of a wish wash as to what you want to do. Those are the main aspects that I covered. I think I covered pretty much everything in the game. The only thing I couldn't talk to you about was the Ural abilities and all that, because I don't have them. And I didn't go into detail with all of the expansions and all of the extra Kickstarter content because there's just a lot, right? And I don't think you guys want to hear too much. You can go and look at the campaign page in the description below if you really want to know about each and every single one of those things. And of course, the extra die, which you'll sometimes get to use. So let me tell you about it. First of all, the artwork is excellent. I really like the artwork in this game. We've done some pictures on Instagram if you want to take a look at them. And they are really cool. I like North mytholo my Norse mythology. I have like the Vikings. I like Norsemen. All that good stuff is super fun. And I enjoy that. I think there's a lot of nice components in the game. And for a prototype, it looks really, really good. I like the they can play up to six players, which is interesting. And there's also a solo variant, which I probably wouldn't play specifically myself, but it is there for people who are interested in that kind of thing. Um, so what do I think about, not only the components are good and the artwork is really good, but the gameplay itself. Well, it has a Yahtzee style mechanism, but what makes this interesting than any other game I've played before is you're gonna be utilizing your tableau and uh, placing down your cards here, your warriors, and trying to roll them. Now, the better ones are obviously the ones that require more specific rolls, the weaker ones are going to be the ones that require less specific rolls, and they're going to give you probably less attack, and they're probably going to give you less glory, but you need to make a combination. My first mistake when playing this game was I tried to put all the big units out, hoping that I'd get lucky with the rolls, and that was not a good idea. You need to make sure that you have a wide variety of units, and you need to decide when you want to send certain units to Valhalla. Sometimes it's better to lose, especially with the Loki expansion, because then you'll be able to utilize those losing abilities. I like the Norse... Uh, expansion here, Odin's Blessing, uh, which is going to give you the ability to add special effects onto your cards. This is a definite add-on to me because I really enjoy the extra action that you can go ahead and take. There is some really cool stuff with this game too, not only in the team variants, but also in just the free-for-all mode because you don't necessarily always want to end the game at a certain time and sometimes you want to fight players who are winning and that player is always going to try and end the game quickly. 
But you have to realize that they are probably going to be in a stronger position when they have more warriors out, regardless of whether they have more victory points or not. So there's a lot to consider in this game. It's a very deep strategic game, surprisingly, for a dice chucker. Most games that I think about for dice chuckers, like Elements and King of Tokyo, King of New York, those type of games are going to be fairly simple, fairly easy, it's fairly straightforward. You roll the dice, you add them onto the board, and then you collect or you do damage. In this one, you don't always want to attack, and you don't always want to do damage, and sometimes you want to lose. Sometimes you want to make sure your tableau is rife with a bunch of amazing units that all synergize together. Other times you're going to be using a different expansion that will affect it in some other way. There's just a lot going on. So for people who are probably not as interested in a deep, enriching, strategical or tactical experience with these kind of dice chuckers, uh, probably going to want to pass on this one, specifically due to the fact that it has a lot going on, and it's probably, probably I wouldn't say for a, I wouldn't say for a kid necessarily. You'd probably be okay if you're 14, 15, I'd imagine, but it it is very, very deep and tactical. And there's of course a lot of take that action going on. There's cards in the deck that are going to affect players. Some of them are very, very powerful, like the one that says you can reroll all the dice or you can change all the die that you have X's on to wilds. Very, very powerful. Other ones are just going to give you straight. Uh, what is it called? Straight strength or attack damage and those are super cool i like those aspects in the game i think that there's just so much going on uh, for me personally i enjoyed this game it's one of those games where i can only play at certain times because it requires a lot of deep thinking for me and it's not the same deep thinking as it would be for like a euro game i have to think about what dice I, how i want to roll the dice and where i want to place them and what units i want to bring out next and what expansions i'm playing with and how they're going to affect the game but like i said it's probably one of those games where you're going to decide whether it is for you based on the mechanisms uh, the specific different actions you can take and if you like strategic die rollers there definitely is an audience for this game and i i rate this game right down the middle it's a solid little game and it has some great aspects to it definitely go ahead and check out Valhalla in the description below it's currently on Kickstarter if it sounds like something that you would like all right guys thanks for watching the unfiltered gamer Kickstarter board game review if you like this video go and check out the rest of our videos if you on YouTube like subscribe and comment and uh, it all does help we do greatly appreciate it uh, like I said though my reviews are specifically just what I think uh, you should definitely decide for yourself if these type of games are for you I try and give a little bit of a little bit of positives, a little bit of negative, and I try and find the audience that's right because just because I don't like a game doesn't mean you don't necessarily will, uh, and just because I do like a game doesn't mean you will as well. So just take those into consideration. Please check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And also go ahead and check out our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. We've got tons of giveaways and great prizes, even more than my own site but we do have some. We also have our Halloween blog post out. If you want some good Halloween games, our editor and my wife, Callie Wright, decided to post something up for you guys. Go ahead and check that out. I'm sure she'd appreciate a little read through. All right, that's all I got this time. As always, I look forward to fighting with you in the Ragnarok next time.